public electric car charging infrastructure is far better than it's ever been before. In fact, it's never been easier to travel long distances in an electric car than it is today. Okay, let me clarify that a bit. It's never been easier in many parts of the world, although I acknowledge that there are still massive swathes of many countries that are not easily traversable in a plug-in car that isn't a Tesla. But while on a press launch event of the new 2020 Chevrolet Bolt EV, I realized something that I hadn't really realized before. Public charging stations can be pretty horrifying if you've never actually used them before. You might think it's a little like a gas pump. You roll up, you pay, you plug in, you charge. But sometimes not so much. And while many more experienced owners with many, many miles of electric driving under their belts might be quite happily rocking up at a charging station they've never been to before and have enough collected knowledge to figure out how things should work, those who assume electric car charging should just be plug in and play may get a nasty surprise the first time they visit a charging station. So today I'm going to go over some basic things that you should bear in mind that probably will help you navigate and use the plethora of different charging stations out there. Tesla owner? Well, yeah, you get to benefit from Tesla's own ecosystem, which is a shining example of how to do charging right. But since there are more charging networks out there than Tesla's, and some Tesla owners do use adapters to use other charging stations, I hope you'll appreciate this video and find some of the information in it useful as well. I should also note that I'm going to reference the Chargeway colors and numbering system in this video. If you're not familiar with Chargeway, check out the link here on the Chargeway video I did from about a year or so ago. You can check out the app at chargeway.net. First up, let's deal with companion apps. Companion apps are your friends and should make it easier for you to find a reliable charging station that you can use with your car. There are plenty of companion apps out there, but Chargeway and PlugShare are my personal favorites. Open Charge Map and Plug Surfing can also be a good source to find reliable charging. Plug Surfing is a more European based service. And once you have one or more of these apps on your phone, remember to set them up to reflect the charge port that your car has, as not all charging locations have a connector that will work with your car. Assuming you've used a decent route planning app to get you to the charging station, a better route planner is a personal favorite of mine, but some of the apps I've mentioned also have great algorithms for predicting your range requirements based on weather and location. I'm going to assume you actually did manage to get to the charging station in question. And here I'm afraid is where the fun or craziness can start. The first of these is just paying for charging. Charging stations generally accept payment through three different means, a credit card or debit card payment, a smartphone app, or an RFID smart card authentication system. For some reason that I do not know, credit and debit charge readers at charging stations are notoriously unreliable. So if you arrive at a charging station and see that's the primary source of payment, it is always worth checking to see if another method is available. For what it's worth, I've had very limited success in the past year with Electrify America's credit card reader technology, but its smartphone app, where the payment is done within the app after entering your payment information, is far more reliable. And the RFID smart card authentication system is also a little notorious with certain charging station manufacturers or charging networks. So wherever possible, I do tend towards the smartphone app if it's available and I have cell phone coverage. Sometimes charging providers expect you to become a subscription-based member, but other times you can guest charge at a similar rate that you'd just get from swiping your credit card. But you'll likely find the system more reliable to use if you charge through your app. Another benefit to the smartphone app method is that some charging apps actually tell you how long you've been plugged in and how much power you're pulling at a particular point. This makes it easier to figure out when to return to your car and hit the road again without needing to wait longer than you actually have to. Generally, you'll need one or two different apps depending on where you live to use all of the charging stations in your area. So go ahead and download them and set them up before you hit the road. It's more convenient then trying to set it up by the charging station. Next up, plugging in. Some charging stations require you to plug in before you authenticate, but most do it the other way around. You should check for instructions on the unit before plugging in, otherwise you may have to start the entire process again. 
Some charging apps will actually tell you how to authenticate and plug in. So this is yet another reason to spend a few moments downloading those charging station apps before you hit the road. And remember, some charging stations are particularly slow responding to button presses like Electrify America's. Or when it comes to the physical act of plugging in, the specifics will depend on the car you've got. Owners of cars with Chademo charging plugs, that's blue plugs on the Chargeway app, will see a handful of different connector styles. Some will have two levers that you must depress when plugging in to lock the charge port to the charging station. Others will have a simple slide base mechanism. In both cases, you should push the connector in until it clicks and locks in place. If the charging plug falls out of the car, check to see if one of those two levers are broken. It was a common problem with early Chidemo rapid charging stations, which is why the whole charger inlet locking mechanism design has evolved over time. If your charge connector is broken and won't stay in place, don't try to charge because it won't let you. The other main charging type for non-Teslas is the CCS or green in the chargeway system. It's relatively easy to use in so much there's no special locking mechanisms to figure out. But in my experience, the charge cables for some CCS charging stations, especially the newer high powered ones, can be so heavy that they tend to pull the charge connector a little even when you've plugged in. While it doesn't actually pull out, it can sometimes make it hard for the car to initiate charging as the low voltage pins inside the charge cable don't always make a firm connection with the car because of that extra weight of the cable pulling it down. To rectify that, I find that you have to hold the plug in place when initiating the charge. You have to wait for the charging station to complete its initial tests to make sure the connection is fine, and then you can just let go. Once the charging station actually initiates charging, the connector gets firmly locked in place, so there's no need to hold it there. Many a failed charging session can be traced back to just a little too much mechanical play in the low voltage signal wires in that connector caused by a very heavy charging cable. Finally, those double headed charging stations you see with more than one socket per station. Well, while they look like they might be able to support two cars at once, some charging stations don't. And it's not always easy to tell which ones do and which ones don't. Just remember that if somebody else is plugged into the same physical station that you want to plug into, your car may not immediately start charging, or it may charge at a reduced power rate until the first car is finished, or at least charge at a lower speed. Have I missed out any tips you think that new car owners should talk about when it comes to rapid charging? Are there any stations that you know of with weird or unusual things that you have to do in order to get your car to start charging? And which non-Tesla charging providers do you prefer and why? Leave us your thoughts in the comments below. That's it. Thanks for watching. And if you'd like to help us make more videos like this, please do like, comment and subscribe. Send us a couple of dollars our way every month through Patreon. You can feed our coffee habit with Kofi or visit our swag store. I'll be back soon with more content for you all to enjoy. But until then, keep evolving.